Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh, and this is Josh. Hi. And today we're talking about balancing your plane, because it's very important. It, it is wrong. actually probably one of the most important things. Yes. Make sure that your plane is perfectly balanced so you have a good flight experience. It's one of the most overlooked, too. So you can see here we have three different planes in front of us. We have the uh, P-51 Mustang. Yes. Uh, we have the Fokker over here. Absolutely. And I'm assuming this is a scratch build that we came up with is right here. Is that what here. you think that is? Well, yeah, it look, I mean, I wouldn't put my name on it. You know, if just I was just show me where we're going to put planes. the engine on, though. Uh, probably right underneath, put a propeller around the front. That's where the face would be. Right. This is actually our balancing friend. This, this is what we're going to use to balance our airplanes with. Okay. And it's something you guys can do. Take a scrap of wood, drill some holes. You don't even need to put these outriggers. C-clamp it onto your workbench. And uh, two pencils with rubber ends Make on Make sure they're end. number two pencils. Number two pencils. If not, they won't be graded right. And I think Hobby King sells those, right? Uh, no. Okay. No, they don't. Well, they don't. you can pick some up somewhere. One of the most important things is before you main your airplane and take it up, Take your time, balance your plane, you'll have the best flight experience possible. So many times back when I used to fly, a lot of people would dog a certain airplane saying, oh, it was a terrible flyer, I couldn't get it off the ground, it was squirrely and handling. The only difference was, was the CG. You wanna guess what CG is? CG stands for Castle Gate. But Protect not. the castle. Protect the castle, no. CG stands for Center of Gravity. Oh. Yep, that's what we're talking about. There should be an O in there then, C-O-G. Center oh. of Gravity, cog. How about C little Check your cog. Check your crap and check your cog. Actually, check your cog every time you do have to check your crap because CG can sometimes change with your glue. Okay. You, you, thank you. See, that's why I'm here. Well, I'll tell you what. This is a new Hobby King P51 Mustang. And uh, one thing known about this one, it is known for being nose heavy. Now, on the other end here, we have the brand new, soon to be reviewed, Fokker DR1 triplane. This is notoriously tail heavy. We're gonna show you two different things on how to uh, balance them out. The characteristics you'll see from both of them and uh, go through them. Sounds good. Why don't we start with the easy one first? Okay. Now Josh, generally when we uh, do center of gravity on an airplane, we go about 33% back on the wing. This one we're not gonna, we're gonna go about 25% back on the okay. wing. Okay, why is that? Well, why is that? On the Mustangs we found looking through forums, everyone usually balances about 25% back. If you notice the wing's kind of a goofy shape, mm -hmm. most people have a good experience when they balance it around 25% back. Okay. But generally, if you're doing a scratch build and you wanna do your first airplane or there's not much literature on it, go between 30 and 33% back and you'll be in enough of an area where the plane should safe be fairly zone. controllable. It'll safe. be your safe zone. Okay. Now, say you threw a battery in this. Okay? I threw a battery in this. You threw a battery in this and it's a little bit nose heavy. Now, what you would experience if you went ahead and took this off, with a nose heavy airplane, you're not gonna get good slow flight characteristics. You're not gonna get very, very good elevator control because the massive amount of weight in the front is gonna keep it from wanting to be uh, adjusted pitch wise. And also, if you do have something come out of a loop, it's gonna have a real hard time pulling out of the bottom end of it. So you may get yourself into the loop, but you may get yourself out of the loop, and we call that a figure nine, and that is not a good place to be. Also, landing, you won't be able to get a good enough flare. You'll be full back on the sticks. You'll get high speed stalls. So if you notice any of those characteristics when you're flying your airplane, Stay away from it. You have a balance issue. Okay. Okay? All right. Okay, we talk about this. Now, one thing, before you balance your airplane, this is a fairly narrow fuselage. We're gonna take our pencils. We're gonna stick them in our balance beam here. Okay. Go ahead and put the airplane upside down. Upside down. Upside down. Okay. On low wing airplanes, generally you balance them upside down. Okay, generally with an airplane, you never wanna balance the airplane without the battery. You wanna balance the airplane as you're gonna fly the airplane. Say you had this battery right here and it wasn't in here and you balanced out perfectly. Once you shove that battery in here, it's a boom. whole different story. Whole different story. So we wanna put the battery you're gonna be flying within here. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna go around front here. And you don't need to fasten it and close it, but you just wanna mock it up. That was pretty good right there. Plane is in. You got about 25% back on the wing, we do. Okay. Now, if I was gonna fly an airplane, I'd much rather have it be nose heavy than tail heavy. Now here's the benefit of having a plane that's inherently nose heavy. You can do a couple things. You could modify this plane, put your battery in a different location. Here's being roughly the balance point here, and this long here, it takes much less weight to adjust and counteract nose heaviness than it does to have a plane that's inherently tail heavy. So we're very, very fortunate here. Now there's lots of different materials we can use. Like cement blocks. No, not uh, cement blocks. Well, dumbbells. Go to your hobby shop, go to your car place, Sticky back lead weights are really, really useful for this. They have a sticky back adhesive. And what you can do is, is once you have your plane on the balance beam, you can start placing your uh, weights. Place the weight as far back as you possibly can go to try to counteract some of that weight. And that will enable you to use the least amount of weight because you want to keep your airframe as light as possible without putting too much in the airplane. If you're putting weight here, you need a greater amount. Now what we're going to do is once we have this on the tail, we're going to keep on adding weight. And I think the perfect combination was this right here. Let's go back just a little bit further. There we go. There we go. So that, that's about our weight here. Now what you can do here is you can go, take a little scale, if you want to really be fancy, weigh it out. We got 40 grams of weight. 
So 40 grams of weight on the tail is what it's gonna take to balance this airplane out. Now you have a couple options. You can get creative with your weight. Go to the hobby store, you can buy this and, and weigh out 40 grams. Maybe take the tail off, it's only just bolts on with the Hobby King, and go on the inside of the airplane, put your, your weight right on the inside, you'll never see it. That's one way to do it. If you're in a real pinch and stuff, you can just stick it right on the side of the airplane. Now, one thing you're gonna notice, if you have an inherently nose heavy airplane, they'll generally get off the ground, but you're gonna need a lot of uh, back pressure to get up. Now, on a tail heavy airplane, which we'll be talking about, it's gonna be very, very poor ground handling. It's gonna be very squirrely. The second you give throttle to it, it's just gonna wander all around. And that's because the weight's not distributed on the front as much as it is on the back and it's a very bad place to be. You don't want that. Okay? All right. All right. Well, we're not going to bother this. We'll go ahead and go back to this. Let's talk about nose heavy airplanes. What do you okay. say? Yeah, let's do it. You want to take a wild guess how we're going to balance that thing out? Uh, right side up. Huh? Right side up, yes. Where I recommend balancing the plane is as close to the top of the fuselage as possible. So I would go a third of the way back on the wings right about here, about 33% back. You'd have to change your balance beam a little bit. Go ahead and go ahead and get creative. Shoot two pieces of wood out here with two little nubs. C-clamp them down, and you can balance it off that midpoint of the wing. I'll tell you right now, we have about 85 to 87 grams of weight right on this front firewall. Underneath here, we have sticky back lead weight fastened here and here, and it added up to 85 grams. We're running the 1303 cell, and it balanced out beautifully. It flies hands off. Ground handling is wonderful. The first takeoff I did, it was still inherently tail heavy. It took me what about four four attempts to uh, about four attempts to get it off the ground. When I finally did, I nearly crashed it because the tail was washing out. And that actually brings me up to another point what to have uh, experience when you're flying with a tail heavy airplane. And the tail washing out, basically when you're flying through the air and you give any kind of aileron input, that tail is just kicking around. The adverse yaw is just terrible. Also tip stalling is terrible. Stall characteristics, when you stall it, it'll always drop a wing tip. When you take the plane up and you're flying it, if it's an aerobatic airplane, roll it upside down in a 45 degree angle. At that point, let all your controls go to neutral. If the plane keeps on going in an arc going across and kind of tipping down and finishing off a loop, it's okay. But if the plane comes up at a 45 degree angle inverted and it starts coupling around and coming around at you, then you have a tail heavy airplane, you definitely need to address that. Also, if you're flying in a, an inverted attitude and you're constantly actually pulling back on the stick to keep it from climbing, instead of pushing forward just ever so slightly, your plane's definitely tail heavy. All in all, you got two different examples. One thing that's nice about planes that are inherently nose heavy compared to parent, uh, planes that are tail heavy is it takes a lot more weight on the nose to counteract a tail heavy airplane because there's so much shorter distance between the CG and the front as it does for a nose heavy airplane. So hopefully you guys will have more nose heavy airplanes than tail heavy airplanes, but both are overcome. Now there's one thing we haven't talked about. Rather than going through all this trouble, if you're building your airplane and you have the luxury of doing it, modify your plane so your gear balances out your airplane. Always mock it up with the battery you plan to use. Always uh, take the time to move things around so everything's easily accessible but at the same time working for you. I'd much rather, if I could fit in the uh, battery compartment, put a 2200 because that's basically what this plane would be flying with than have 90 grams of weight in the front nose. Because weight's just wasted. Weight's weight. Weight's weight. It's just, the battery is useful. Exactly. It's like a bigger gas tank. Weight. Weight's weight. But it is more awesome with a bigger battery. Wow, that is so philosophical. Wow. Absolutely. I moved. Yeah. I'm so moved that I would love to get out and fly this plane or at least see how it's flown. I don't know. You know, I want to fly this plane too. Okay. It actually looks pretty decent outside. All right. Yeah. You want to do it? Yeah, let's take it up. Let's balance out because we're ready to go. All right. Well, we want to thank you guys for watching. We want to thank Hobby King for sponsoring this episode and we will see you guys later. See you next time. I'll grab the transmitter. All right.